What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video on the Stream Experiment. My name is Jason. If you're new here, I bring you content related to growing on Twitch in a saturated environment. We're going to get into a lot more tech type stuff like what microphone to use if you're on this budget or that budget or comparing some of that stuff as well. But this series is all about software tutorials, specifically OBS Studios. If you use Streamlabs OBS, that's OK, too, because uh, the interfaces are very similar. So you can use the techniques that you learn here in uh, Streamlabs OBS. So without further ado, I want to introduce something that is really going to help the channel move forward, which is outsourcing my editing uh, for the channel. All of my videos are going to be shipped over to Miss Ellie Doodle, and I'm very excited to have her on board. She goes by L or Ellie. I call her Ellie. Um, obviously, it's not her real name, but she streams on Twitch uh, three times a week-ish, two to three times a week, depending on her schedule, because she also works full-time. So we're going to be trying to get out two videos a month uh, based off me in uh, physical therapy school and her having a full-time job, and we both stream. So I, I think it's going to work out really good. So let's welcome her in. I'm super excited to move forward with her and uh, just get more content out to you guys. But without further ado, let's jump into some nested scenes, how to use them, how I use them. Let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys the building blocks on how I built my entire layout with the nested scenes. I feel like that will be the best benefit for you guys. But if, right off the bat, what is a nested scene? So essentially it's just a scene within another scene. So if we look at this, our boxes on the left are the scenes, and then within that are like uh, the files within a folder. So these are the sources within that one scene. So all, these are where all your files would go within that one scene. So right now we are in my NS camera scene. And I just have that set up so when I'm streaming I know like, hey, this is where I need to go. If something goes wrong with my actual camera, whether it freezes or something else, I go here. And if I fix it here, it fixes everything else that my um, camera scene has been nested as. So a little bit confusing, but I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So right here, so we have this one camera scene and it is set up on the left. So I'm in studio mode. Let me get out of studio mode. Uh, actually, we want to go transition first and then we'll get out of studio mode. Okay, so now we're here, right? So we're in our camera scene. I want to put this into my YouTube recording scene because, hey, I want to record a YouTube video. It's not what I would normally do, obviously, because I'm not doing it that way. But we're going to go in here and I want to put that nested scene in there with that camera. So I'm going to go to scenes and then I'm going to click on the scene that I want to put in. And wh whatever you click on here, whatever you have for sources in that scene, it's going to bring them all in. So if I wanted to put my Fortnite scene in with all of the Fortnite stuff, it's going to bring them all in. But right now we're working on the camera. And then boom, it's going to put it in exactly how it is in this original scene. So if we click on that one, it's going to put it in exactly in the same orientation. So now if we click on that scene and we want to move that camera around and we want to move it over here and orient it different. If I want to, oop, we want to click on it, right click on it and then go to transform and we want to go counterclockwise. We can orient it that way and it doesn't affect any of the other scenes that it's nested as or this original scene it stays the same so it's a really cool way on how to do it and then again if i wanted to fix something with that camera say it freezes or it comes unplugged or whatever and freezes or disappears you go back to here you can right click on that original source you click properties and then you can go and deactivate reactivate and uh, play around with that till you get it working and for me that works almost all of the time um and then as long as i fix this like i said before it fixes all of the other ones now once i have that nested scene done which it's 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 in there this scene is set up how i want it to i put it into like i, I built these other scenes and then i encompass in, in corpus incorporated all of these sources into one source that i put into my mainstream screen so let's Let's take a look at this first. Okay, so we have that nested scene in here form our camera source. And then I have it shrunk right here. And that is actually over the top of a, um, a drop shadow and a, a cool little shape. So like there's, there's a lot more that goes into it. And that's all built within this scene right here. And then I took everything here and I put it in my mainstream screen. So when I'm playing a game or teaching something, it is all in here underneath this Fortnite camera 
scene and you're going to implement that the same exact way you're going to click the plus button you're going to go to scenes and then you're going to click on the scene that you want in there in this case i wanted my fortnite scene in there and then i I put it in just like i did with that camera scene and if i want to click on that and i want to shrink it make it smaller or bigger i can do that and it doesn't affect the original scene but what i really like about this setup is that i have another layout here for a different game so i originally set it up as a roller coaster tycoon because the orientation of this game right here or like this this orientation it works better for that game so i have all of the same sources and everything linked into the the main files from this nested scene which is that over here ns roller coaster tycoon and i have all of those files and overlays and everything that i wanted on this scene and then i just um nested them and put them in here i know it's a little bit confusing but i think you guys have the general idea but it, it makes it really easy for me you don't have a bazillion different sources to sort through if something goes wrong you know exactly where to go to fix it and that to me is worth all of the extra time it took to set it up this way and i feel like it'll really save you guys a lot of time and headache down the road and that's why i did it this way and again if i'm streaming and I want to switch from this scene to another scene, what I would do is go to studio mode because then I can click and I'll have both of them up at the same time for a second. And then I can do that. And then I'm going to click transition. And then you guys didn't see anything when you're watching the stream. And it's just a, a super cool secret little thing that I do behind the scenes. And it just, it, it makes a very, very good environment um, for like the viewers, like the, the production quality, I guess I would say goes up. If you have things set up right and it's it, it's really clean in OBS because it, it um, you know what to click, when to click it, and it's just super cool. Hey, if you learned something, click that like button. Click the subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in future videos. Well, I guess I would see you, but you'll see me. Otherwise, come over onto my Discord and ask questions there. Put them down in the comments. If I missed something or if you have a really cool idea with nested scenes, let me know because I'm all down to learn. Otherwise, hammer kills 20 down in the description. You can come hang out with me live and we can go over whatever it is. If you want to see my screen or do whatever else, we can, we can talk about it live there. All right. That's it for now. We'll see you guys next time.